guys, I'm Evelyn. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Before we get started with today's build, I would like to say a massive thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. So if you don't know what Skillshare is, I am super excited to be the one to introduce you to them because they are an online learning community that has thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. On Skillshare, you can explore your creativity, discover new skills, or maybe improve on skills that you already already have. They offer classes in, for example, different Adobe programs, so you can learn about video editing. They also have classes in interior design, productivity, creative writing, how to make a career out of your creativity, and much, much more. A class I'm currently taking is called Interior Design Basics, Simple Steps to Your Perfect Space by Lauren Cox from Havenly. Because as you guys know, like, I love interior design, obviously. I find her very professional, very knowledgeable, like she clearly knows what she's talking about. And the class also includes super helpful examples such as room tours, house tours, and also pictures. So if you're more of a visual learner, I would highly recommend that class. It's a class that'll thoroughly teach you the basics of interior design and I find it very interesting and also helpful. Since Skillshare is made for learning, there are no ads to interrupt you while you're taking a class and they continuously put out new premium classes, so there's always something new to explore. Plus, you can get the annual subscription for just $10 a month. And Skillshare have been so generous to give the first 1,000 people who click on the link at the top of the description box a free trial so you can explore your creativity. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and now let's get on with it. So today we are building a tiny house and this is actually going to be the start of tiny house week. I know that it is Tuesday but I literally I came home Sunday and then a friend came over right as I got home. <laughs> Like, I had slept maybe from Thursday to Sunday, I think I slept like, like 10 hours possibly combined, so I was so tired, but she kind of had to leave her home because her boyfriend had friends over and they were going to watch football, soccer, whatever you want to call that, and she just kind of like didn't want to be there so I was like okay yeah you can come over it's fine let's go and we went for a walk and stuff and then another friend came over and we had sushi so by the time they went home it was like 10 or so so I decided to just go lie on my couch watch uh, WandaVision finally finish that and then go to bed I was so tired so I decided to build this yesterday instead so we're starting tiny house week today but i'm planning on maybe having like four or five videos up this week depending on you know real life plans and such also my other channels that i'm also recording for but four to five videos is the goal for this week so we're doing tiny house week and we're starting out with this tiny country house i think that's what i want to call it i don't know i feel like it's kind of like it has cottage vibes but it also has tiny farmhouse vibes i used the country kitchen in it which i love by the way it's super cute it really fit this kitchen as well like it fit the whole vibe of the house perfectly so i was super excited about that i hope you guys will like the kitchen and then um yeah i just i don't know i'm thinking i'm gonna call it like tiny country house or something so also if there are any other tiny houses that you want to see from me this week let me know in the comments i'll probably build like two tomorrow so if i see any super cool suggestions i might jump on that tomorrow for one of the videos and i do have some some themes that i want to do but I'm not fully decided on all remaining four. So definitely let me know in the comments if there are any like specific tiny houses that you want to see from me. Hopefully we can make them as different from each other as possible. I say we, but I'm the one, <laughs> I'm the one building them. I don't know. Hopefully I can manage somehow <laughs> to make them as different from each other as possible. And yeah, I'm really excited for it. It's been a while since I've had like a themed week, but if it turns out well, like if I feel like I like this kind of workflow, I will definitely do more themed weeks because I feel like it could be fun. I don't know. If you have any like ideas, I already have some themed uh, or some themes that we could possibly do for future weeks, but if you have any ones let or any other ones, let me know as well. I'm always up for hearing you guys out. So um, yeah, but we're starting out with Tiny House Week today on Tuesday, not Monday. That's okay. <laughs> so this house is for one sim, just a single. There is only a 
one sim bed in the house and it is a tiny house i think it's 62 tiles overall i did however have to cheat it a little bit for the screenshots but the uploaded version the one that's on the gallery is 62 and the one that's also in tray files on patreon that one's also 62 tiles so don't worry about that you will get all the benefits and all that good stuff and then i also made sure that it had room for a pet which is going to have to be a cat even though full disclosure i forgot to place down a litter box so you might have to find a place for that i don't know it just completely escaped my mind like it just i don't i brain farted it's it's fine but you can probably find a spot for it somewhere in the house like not every single tile in this house is taken up by something important something super vital to gameplay so you could possibly like take out a bookcase or one of the hallway tables or something like that and place down the litter box for the cat and if you don't want it inside you can also place it outside it's just that the house doesn't have a bathtub so you know you have to have a bathtub to bathe your dogs in the game so yeah you're you might have to stick to a cat this time but hopefully that is okay it's built on a 30 by 20 in brindleton bay i felt like it had been a while since the last time i built here in brindleton bay and if i didn't build on this lot it would have been the typical one that i usually stick to in windenburg up in the foresty area there are two different lots that i built on a lot up there but they're both 20 by 20s and I don't know, it's nice to kind of like jump from world to world sometimes. So I decided to go with Brindleton Bay for this one. Plus it kind of fits the theme of the house as well. I feel like the interior fits the the world very well as well. And yeah, I hope you guys will like it. If it sounds like I'm losing my voice, I have not been coughing or anything. Like it's literally just because of lack of sleep for those uh, two days, I suppose. I also had like a couple of days earlier in the week because it's just been a little bit of a busy week. But um, for, you know, several reasons, such as me going away from the weekend. Um, but it, it'll be fine. Like, give me a couple of days and my voice will be back to completely normal. We'll just ignore it for now. And I know that that's a little stupid considering in the last video I said that I'd fix my sleeping schedule. I have. It's fine. It's just that when I'm busy, I get a little bit stressed out you guys know how it is so we're all good though but um anyways for the interior the color scheme that i went for is very bright i wanted it to just be like light and calming and welcoming i did use a lot of blue and i feel like i also used pink kind of inspired by the kitchen actually i know that the curtain color is a little bit i don't know if you can see it on one of the cabinets the sink one actually it's very like it's very saturated pink, but I chose to very politely ignore that. So I didn't want there to be like a super vibrant pink around the house, you know? I wanted it to just be like a nice soft kind of pink. So that's kind of the, the color scheme that we're going for. There's a little bit up there with the planter from, it's a nifty knitting, I think. But other than that, pretty much just going for softer colors and it has a very calming kind of what's it called? Expression. I don't know. That sounds so hashtag deep. Um, anyways, actually, let's just call it vibe. That's, I feel like that's the word that I usually go for, but for some reason it's, it's all the brain farting. I, I don't know. It's fine. We're going to go with vibe. So I just like that. It has like a bit of a calming kind of vibe to it. Does that make sense? So yeah. And also I actually planned for the little I don't want to, what do you call that? Like the renovated part of the house with all the glass and the glass roof as well with all the windows basically out here, you know, top of the screen right now. I actually plan for that to be more of like a greenhouse situation, but as per usual, I'm just really drawn towards putting dining areas there because I like the thought of being able to sit there, maybe have your morning coffee by the dining table and just enjoy the sun rising and all the colors and up here you know the lot is surrounded by nature as well so it would be super calming for someone who's very into nature so definitely not a person like me but super calming for other people to sit there and have their morning coffee and just 
look at nature or something. I don't know. I just like that. It's the same if you have like a beach house. You want to place the dining room where you can kind of see the beach, I suppose. I don't know. Maybe that's stupid. Also, actually, you want all the rooms. So like with big windows, so you can see the beach. I would love that, but I'm also not a beach person. Actually, I would like to just stay inside the house and just look at the beach as long as I don't have to go to the beach. That's fine. But like, you get what I mean, right? Like just have the view of the nature or the view of the beach. So I just feel like it often, it looks nice to have the dining area there. Also because if you're sitting in the living room and you have a TV, you're most likely going to be looking at the TV. So unless you have like a living room that's more like a lounge area situation, so they don't have a TV there, but maybe like a fireplace instead. So just like for lounging and talking to each other, stuff like that. I don't know. I heard people do that. Um, but just, yeah, like a, like a more calming kind of setting. It would be nice to, um, to have like big windows and a nice view. I don't know. It's a, it's a dream, I suppose, but I don't know where I like, would I even want to live in that house? I'm more like an apartment kind of person. <laughs> I don't know. Is that just me? Like, I like the idea of it, but I could not imagine myself actually staying there for a long, long time. I don't know. Let me know if you guys feel the same way, because there is definitely a bit of a dilemma there. But anyways, so that's basically where I played the plate, placed the dining room and I stuck to the pink chairs. Are those from, oh my gosh, I already forgot what the pack is called, Paranormal Stuff Pack. I actually really like them. They're very versatile. I feel like you can use them in a lot of settings, to be honest. And I feel like my grandma or my mom used to have chairs like that too. Poss or my dad, maybe? I don't know, but they're super nice. I like the wicker situation on them. So it's, I don't even know if that's called wicker, but you guys get what I mean, like the straw, seating thing yeah you'll see me play testing this bathroom quite a lot as i'm building but that's because i kind of didn't want to use one of the one of these open showers you know we have the one from discover university we also got the one last year from snowy escape and i feel like they're just kind of boring sometimes which i know sounds a little bit weird because technically you can customize them like crazy but for tiny houses where you don't really necessarily have a lot of room to customize with, it's just kind of, you place down an open shower and that's it. So I wanted there to be a proper shower stall, but unfortunately I could not make it work for some reason. I didn't want to size down the toilet. That might have helped out. I don't fully know if a size down toilet in The Sims actually works. I know that sized down calendar that's not what it's called uh sinks work but i'm not sure about the toilets so i didn't want to risk it i could possibly have tested it but it would have looked stupid like they would have been levitating above the toilet when they're sitting down i suppose you can't see that unless you play with the no mos mosaic mosaic how do you pronounce that word in english the one where you where the the blur disappears unless you're playing with that mod whatever you want to call that um, you wouldn't be able to see the sim levitating anyways, but it still looks kind of odd with a very tiny toilet. Also, my, my stomach is making noises. If you can hear that, please just ignore it. I, don't, I can't control it. I can't stop it. It's just kind of happening. So also adding a cat to the house was actually inspired by these bed sheets. They are adorable. I've gone on a rant about them before. So I'm not going to do that again. I am definitely a dog person, not a cat person, but the bed sheets are adorable. So I kind of just felt like I had to add a cat to the household. I don't know. It made sense to me. And right here, I'm kind of, I'm turning around the house, deciding if I want it to look good on the gallery picture or if I want it to look good in game. And I decided to go with in game, of course, because that's fine. So I turned it around. It's not supposed to be a wide lot. It's supposed to be a long lot, if you guys get what I mean. So it's supposed to be like narrow if you're looking at it from the front. Um, but I just, it, it looked more correct to me if I turned the house around. Also because that's where the lighting actually falls, so it just looks nicer that way. And now it looks kind of odd on the gallery, but you know, 
You gotta sacrifice something sometimes that sound really stupid. <laughs> you say, we all gotta make sacrifices sometimes, right? So the worst, the biggest thing I could possibly sacrifice right now is obviously the thumbnail picture. I know, big deal. But it just, I don't know, it made more sense to me. So it, it's looking a little bit odd on the gallery, but that's completely fine. So instead of getting a backyard, they're getting what I usually call a side yard, which I know is stupid, but it's a, it's a yard to the side of the house. So in my mind, it makes sense. So basically I played around with these rocks for the pathway as I usually do. They're still found in the debug catalog by the way, or I think they're actually world objects. So you're going to have to use the, the cheats that are in the description. I don't remember them. I never actually type them in anymore because I'm using my stream deck and I just have them customized or like uh, key bound as, or not key bound. I basically just have to push a button and they're activated. So I don't actually remember what the cheat code is anymore, but you can always find them in the description. If you're ever curious or you forget what they're called or whatever, you can always find that information in the description, along with all information about the house, like the lot size and what it's called on the gallery and all that kind of information that's always in the description as well. But yeah, as per usual, I've been using these rocks quite a lot lately. So I made this little area next to the house where I ended up putting down a grill and also a picnic table, but they also have a small gardening area and a bench as well. I was definitely imagining the sim to the sim who lives in this house to be a green thumbed sim. So they needed like an outdoors garden area, you know what I mean? They don't have a flower arranging table, flower arranging table? Yeah, you guys get what I mean. <laughs> they don't have anything like that, but they do have several plant pots so they can plant like fruit trees or something, maybe grow their own apples or whatever they want. And I just felt like it was very fitting for this house and also the sim that I had in mind. So um, yeah, but I think that's actually about it. That's all I placed outside. It looks like a very big area, but placing down a picnic table that actually takes up a lot of space <laughs> and I didn't want there to be any rooting problems either. So, you know, also if you want, you can find one of the fish signs. Also, I realized that I forgot to change the color of the water, but I did that before I took the thumbnail pictures. It should be changed in the uploaded version, but if it's not, actually I'm pretty sure it is, but if it's not, please just, I'm sorry for making mistakes, but anyways, so if you want, you can actually take one of the signs, the fish signs from the debug catalog and you can place it on top of the pond. And I'm pretty sure that'll, that'll like, um, spawn fish or it'll, it'll make sure that it, it spawns fish in the pond as well. So your Sims can use it for fishing, which is kind of fancy. Like you can make your own fishing pond, but I decided not to this time. Um, but it's definitely something that you can add to the house if you should want. So um, yeah, I think that is pretty much about it. Also hanging some outdoors planters over here for fun because why not? It's kind of like they're hanging from the roof piece a little, from the eaves a little bit. So I thought that would look fancy. Also at some point I actually take the bucket of fruit or veggies and I place it down over by the plant pots. So it kind of looks like they've already harvested some fruit and put it in the bucket. I like that detail. So I just had to mention, even though I've not placed it down yet, but anyways, that is about it from me today. So if you guys like this house, you can download it off the gallery. My ID is Evelyn YT and you can also find it under the hashtag Evelyn or Evelyn YT. And as always, the tray files can be found on my Patreon, which is linked to in the description box, along with a link directly to the build, both on the gallery on the and on the patreon so if you're ever like in doubt just click one of those links <laughs> thank you again so so much to skillshare for sponsoring today's video definitely go check them out by clicking on the link in the top of the comment section in the pinned comment and that's about it so i hope you all enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and all that good stuff if you did and i'll see you all in the next one Bye bye Teardrops start to dry Even when the sun begins to shine Again Taking all the advice there is And none of it has helped Experience has made me realize That I won't build my life on empty words Being so damn naive It only hurts I'm so tired of
Thought the love was made for me.